on today's episode of The Game Chasers. Yeah, and Billy was just caught slipping on it, too. I'm so glad you look stupid in that whole transaction, man. Right here, right here in front of us. No, it's, it's old school. Robocop versus Terminator. And it's a freaking Game & Watch. Zombie apocalypse? Y'all would never survive. <laughs> We're going to a flea market and we're looking for some video games or toys or anything pop culture. We said nine o'clock. It is literally like I just checked my my, my phone. It's 947. It's me, Melvin the Great, Stupid Billy, and Shady J. This is the first time that the three of us have been together in like 12 years to film. I'm being facetious, but you get the point. It's been a while. And what is with your 1970s tint glasses? What are you what are you doing today? I'm a little worried because I'm pretty sure it's been so long he's forgotten how to hold the camera and maybe even hit the record button, but we'll see. You know, it's, it's old school. You know what's funny? We were meeting at his place and he was still almost an hour late. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> I'm freaking real. So I pull up to Melworth's. And Billy's there. One of my biggest complaints is that nobody was ever on time. Billy, for whatever reason, the last, I don't know, five years or so, has become pretty responsible with that. However, Melvor, he he runs on Melvor time. I was told to be there at nine, and admittedly, I was a little late, but I forgot money, so I had to go back home. Um, I have a shoebox full of money, and I didn't want to stop at an ATM machine, so I had to go back home to get money and I was uh, 20 minutes late. What is this, 1932? <laughs> That's a shoebox of money. So I get there and stupid Melvor finally pulls up and he gives us the stupidest grin that I've ever seen out of him. He actually looked like a lesbian soccer mom pulling up <laughs> and smiling like, yo, I'm here. <laughs> that was him. <laughs> So anyways, Melbourne pulls up all smiling and happy and me and Billy are like, what the F is he smiling about? He gets out, he goes inside, disappears for another 15 minutes. The funny thing is, hang on. He was late being at his own home. That is like, that's a first. That's gotta be a first, right? I'm not gonna get offended because you said that because you know, I have enough self-reflection to where I'm like, okay, yeah, you know what? I'm an ordinary guy. Why do I still do it? Because it's fun. I always love going to the flea market and not just for games, but for toys, whatever. I mean, even like just random crazy things you see in the 80s that just don't exist anymore. The flea market and thrift stores are just cool places to always go. I'm gonna go whether or not we're filming or not. It's really weird that people seem to be pretty chill for some reason. They don't get all freaked out when the camera starts, you know, filming and nobody seems to care at this place, which is good. I like this place. I it's love you, hard. baby. Yeah, I love you. Okay, so we've been through about half the flea market now. We really haven't found anything. This place used to be an absolute gold mine. We've been going to it for 10 years. Place has kind of gone downhill. I mean, it seems like it's less garage sellers and more people that maybe just found things that fell off the truck and they're selling them. <laughs> I've said this many a time, I don't just collect video games, I don't just collect toys. I collect all kinds of crap that I don't need. One of those is records, so I'm always looking for vinyl. One dollar each, guys. So we're at this one booth, Jay's see some records, and I look down and I happen to see a Game Boy game. I see NBA Jam on the Game Boy. Now, NBA Jam is, in my opinion, the best basketball game ever made. It's actually a fun sports game, and uh, I have it on Super Nintendo, though really the only way I've ever played it. Don't know what this game is like on Game Boy, but I can't imagine it's amazing. However, I'll pick it up if it's super cheap. Hmm, nobody's gonna want this. I'll do a dollar. You do a dollar? I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Not sorry. in the game. It's just a sports Game Boy game, this ain't worth nothing. Two dollars? 
And he doesn't want to do a dollar, he wants to do two dollars. What if this is literally the only game in this flea market right now? I'd be a fool not to get it. So you know what, sir? I will do two dollars. But I only have a 20. How sad is it that you guys have to ask me for money? Huh? How sad is it that you can't zip up your pants? The button's busted. The, the belt's holding them together. And what are you doing looking at my crotch, huh? <laughs> That's the better question. You disgusting swine, man. I got a five. I hate saying, hey, I'll do something for a dollar or two and then hand them a 20 and they're like looking at you as they're counting out the change. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can see those. Give me 10 bucks for all the... Yeah, I don't. This, this one is like $16 in eBay. So he has a Super Scope game here. Uh, I have no interest in these. These things are coasters to me. You have to have the giant bazooka, which, by the way, when the Super Nintendo was coming out, how awesome did it look to, to have that big, giant bazooka? You, you know, everyone thought that that thing was going to be awesome. We had the zapper on the NES. This was the upgraded version, the bazooka. And the thing ended up being trash. Such a disappointment. This is junk. We buy a lot of junk, but this is actual junk. So today the flea market's not really looking too good. I didn't want to walk out here with nothing and NBA Jam. I mean, it's it's a sports game, but honestly, NBA Jam, NBA Jam is one of the better like basketball games out there, if not the best. No, but Melbourne the Great it has a nice ring to it, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, even you know that's shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to give himself his own nickname. Oh, that, is, that is great, though. That is great. <laughs> so what is this, late 90s? So there's... Look for a date. Is this your first day? I see some toys here. Uh, Excuse me. I'm seeing some older stuff in here. He has so much interest in just the worst toys. What are those? The dollar store. I see a couple of these little cheapy action figure type characters uh, from a line called Final Faction. This is a dollar store line that's out right now. They're literally dollar action figures, but they're nice sculpts. Melvor is wearing me out. He is literally picking up every single toy right now. Dude, let's just go. You know, we're cool. He's a lame -o. This is like, what is it, the 2012 turtle? I see a couple of figures here, so I'm gonna put these in my maybe pile, if you will. Weaponry here. I don't know what well, these are two. Watching this knucklehead, the most boring thing I've ever gone through in my entire life. Sitting at this table. Okay, what do you have for these right here, then? She says it's $5 for, for this little bundle of stuff that I want. I don't have $5 anymore because I gave a couple of bucks to stupid Billy. Shouldn't have given Can't you that, that money. When you do four, he literally only has four when I've been trying to play. He, he literally only has $4 on So Billy jumps in, oh, you just take $4? Like at this point, I'm embarrassed. Like I was honestly just about to walk away. $4? Thank you, I appreciate that. She almost has this look of disgust, like you cheap scumbags, you know? And then this guy has the nerve to try to say, oh, oh, well, look, look what I did for you. you. You should be saying thank you because I got you this deal. No, you didn't. You just embarrassed me. I look like a, a cheap scumbag right now because I don't have $5 for these toys. I come through for him. You know, he wants these really stupid toys. Nobody's going to buy this trash. I put $4 in her pocket. You should be thanking me and her as well. This is junk. We buy a lot of junk, but this is actual junk. All right, at last, we come up to a vendor who has some video games, finally. Billy and Jay just like, we're just like, oh, duh, just walking by completely blind. I'm like, hey, there's stuff over here. Huh? So this dude has some Super Nintendo stuff. We may have an actual jackpot on our hands. I told guy a while ago he can have everything for 400. 400. Ah! I'm sorry, what? <sighs> Well, I'm a floating head, huh? Some really good stuff in here. However, half of them are like sports games, okay? I'm sorry, but you're not getting top dollar for sports games. I'm not even really that interested in Super Nintendo because I got like two or three already. Start to ask about the games. Are you willing to like do these like individually? Or are you trying to absolutely? Well, I will, but it's gonna be probably more. 
They're sitting there as they do, contemplating. I don't know, they just sit there forever. This is what they do. Like if I wanted this one, what would you ask on it? Like just um, Robocop versus Terminator. I'm not interested in the lot. However, he does have a game in here that I don't have. Robocop versus Terminator. Robocop vs. Terminator is pretty good in my opinion. Now, I do prefer the Genesis version. I think the music's better and they, they gave it just absolutely crazy with the, the, the gore effects in it. Probably 30 on that. 30? He wants $30. Now, that's ridiculous. That just don't sound right. Or maybe it's, I just question everything. So, are you actually trying to get eBay prices or, or? No, I'm not even okay. doing eBay. Because you said you said we could look it up. Pardon me, sir. I would like to show you on my phone the completed listings of this particular game. So right now it's time for me to go to the universal standard on video game pricing, which is PriceCharting.com. Right. It's a seventeen dollar game on Price Charting. Seventeen dollar game. He's asking thirty for it. I respectfully and kindly let him know, hey man, this is seventeen dollar game. I show him. Billy proceeds to pull up the last one sold on eBay, $17, he shows him. Billy makes a fair offer of $12 on this game. Why am I gonna offer 12 when the sold ones are 17? Look, you don't have to deal with the eBay fees and you don't have to deal with packaging it and shipping it out and going to the post office. If you're up for it, I would be willing to do $12. No. Okay. I wouldn't sell, I wouldn't even sell my sports games to that. At that point, that was my cue to exit. I'm, I'm okay, fine, go ahead and have fun, try to do that. I'm pretty sure I insulted him, even though I was very fair in my opinion. You know when you see those people, you, you don't know who they are, you've never seen them before, you see those people and you just automatically dislike them. Yes. I think that's what's going on here with Billy and this old guy. Who in their right mind is going to come up here and buy this lot for $400 when half of these games are sports games? They both, just for whatever reason, don't like each other's faces. And that's the way game chasing go. Found another vendor here, he's got some games. There's just a few random games, I'm looking through them. Nothing too terribly special. Games! That's the price tag on it. I don't know. <laughs> did you, yeah, you glossed over that though. I did, I looked, I looked right over that. I cannot believe that just happened. He has a box game gear. It's kind of neat. Open it up, check it out. It's pretty minty. Yeah, and Billy was just caught slipping on it too. He literally glossed over it. Now, let's see if we can get a decent price on it. It's not easy to find. You don't usually see this box. Not this version anyway. Or just really the box in general for a game gear. How much? Unfortunately, he wants eighty dollars for it. Time to do some research and see what this thing is worth. Billy literally just found one on eBay that sold for uh, three, four days ago. Today's the seventeenth. It sold on the thirteenth of October, and it sold for sixty-six. What it usually goes for, it seems to be around maybe the fifty to sixty dollar range, and not the eighty dollar range. So I'm going to go see if this guy will work with us. And I'm going to be completely upfront again and say this is this is what this thing usually goes for, and show him. So would you be willing to go less on that? Because this is this is October 13th, man. This is just like a couple days ago. Yeah, I can't. And he's pretty firm. He's not going to come down. So I'm not buying it. 80 is the bottom dollar. 80. All right, I got this one too. Then he says, hey, I got this other, other item. He brings it out, and it's a freaking Game & Watch. What are you asking on this? The same 80? Game & Watch is essentially one of the earliest handheld. It predates Game Gear, it predates Game Boy, it predates Old Tiger, even. <laughs> I'm really not much into them, but I know Billy is. Where'd you come across this? Uh, oh yeah? Usually you don't actually see them in the cardboard boxes. Uh, if you do run across them, they're generally loose. He's wanting $80 for this thing. The only thing that's making me kind of, maybe I should get this, is the fact that it does have the cardboard slip cover over it. 
that's something that is not easy to find. So I'm really thinking about it, but then again, I'm like, man, that's $80. I don't want to spend $80. I'm trying not to spend $80 today. So yeah, this the screen is messed up. As I'm looking closer at this thing, I notice that it's not in the best shape after all. Looks like there's like bleed through coming through, like little black bubbles and, and things like that. Sitting around over time, it does look like the screen has been damaged because there's a splotch right here on the top. So at, at 80 bucks, which is around what it would go for, like this, there's no way, I can't do that. I'm certainly not gonna spend top dollar on this thing if it's not in the best shape. I'm looking down and I see a couple of games, I'm like, you know what, I gotta get something here, whatever. Arrow Fighters Assault. Don't know anything about this one. I do know that Arrow Fighters is a pretty decent series. I played it on Super Nintendo. I have no idea what this game is about. I'm assuming it's about jet fighters and you're assaulting something. I'm also seeing heavy shredding on the NES. I'm actually not sure I have this one. I seriously doubt you're gonna put it in and you're gonna have the option to play as Eddie Van Halen or Slash or Zack Wilde or whatever and heavy shred on a guitar. I just don't see it happening. Hey, would you be willing to do two for 10? I appreciate it, man. When you go to the flea markets, you gotta buy video games. Saying if like the secret of mana, he may have just said, well, I guess like, I'm gonna have to have 30 bucks for that one too. He's probably thinking like 30 bucks for literally every game. I mean, I, I don't wanna touch it, so that's on you. This dude said 30 for that, that uh, Terminator Robocop, Robocop Terminator game, whatever. So Billy decides that he wants to go and offer $30 for Secret of Mana. $30 would be less than what Mana goes for. So you know what? I'm gonna go talk to this guy. I have a theory, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Like, I just think he threw 30 out randomly. Secret of Mana, this game is awesome. And I got this game back in my early days of collecting and it was uh, something I immediately really liked. All right, well, congratulations. Well, actually he was screw me because apparently he sold them all for 400 bucks. Just now. Just now. The old man apparently is like, hey, I sold this stuff. I sold it for what I wanted originally. So screw you. What, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes that since we'd walked off, someone came up and, and bought the entire lot for $400. <laughs> Somebody just got screwed over at this flea market. And Billy's sitting there like, oh, who, who? all like stunned and shocked and hurt. And the guy, the guy actually has, has the nerve to say, you want to see the money? <laughs> so at that point he was gloating. He was basically rubbing in it in Billy's face. And Billy uh, proceeded to turn around, tail tucked between his legs and walk away shamed. Score one for the good guys. <laughs> I'm so glad you look stupid in that whole transaction, man. But at least I didn't have to pay $400 for games. So there, win me. Rearview mirror, no, no, no. Look. You're blocking your rearview mirror. Look, you freaking idiot. If it stays right here, it's in the way of the fucking camera, isn't it? Is that how it was? Is that how it was? Yes. No, it Billy, wasn't. Billy wrapped it up, you. What did you do that for? Oh my God. You want to save scumbag? Just shut up, just shut up about it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, we still got a little bit of time. We're gonna go to an antique store, antique store we've been to before. We haven't been to this antique store in like over 10 years, 11 years. And the last time that we were here, I struck gold. I found a giant bag of GoBots. Curious to see what it's like now. Like, I just, I just, I just want a deal. It's still ain't, it's still ain't $400 worth it's of stuff. stuff. It's not $400, especially if you're buying the bundle. The bundle, right. At a flea market. Billy from five years ago would have handled it completely different from modern day Billy. Modern day Billy is kind of belligerent for some reason. Hey, I guess at the end of the day, he showed me. I guess, I guess he did, didn't he? Jay was supportive of belligerent Billy. 
agreeing with him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm team old man. It's about time somebody puts you in your place. I don't feel like I undercutted or tried to swindle anybody today. I feel like I was very fair, but I feel like I'm also being told that I'm the bad guy. I feel like I feel like I have somebody trying to make me out to be some sort of villain. Thank you. And who would that be? You. Here's what you're gonna pay. You ain't getting it. It's just the way game chasing go. So I didn't call beforehand, however, I figured since everyone's gonna be kind of setting up for at this antique alley, we could just go there, rummage through stuff anyway. And if he has this stuff, great. If not, then. A while back, we were at this flea market and somebody has said that they had in television games. Hey, I've got a bunch of intervision. In television? Intervision. That's oh, when that's... I'm gonna empty my trailer. Antique Alley fine. is this coming weekend? Uh, not this weekend, next weekend. He's bringing these out to his little setup that's gonna be in Antique Alley. And uh, apparently there's other people set up, so we're gonna go and take a look and see what other kind of stuff is here. Interesting, really? Yeah. Why didn't I get a call on this? Because you were in Houston. Ah! Listen, buddy, I'll we'll be in Houston like, that weekend. Uh... I'm in Houston right now, and Billy has taken it upon himself to go looking for video games in Antique Alley without me. Bad form. We found some really awesome stuff here before. Uh, this is just the setup, so it doesn't officially start until this weekend, but people are starting to set up. And if you don't know what Antique Alley is, think of it as about a 15 or 20 mile long garage sale. There's just a little bit of everything. There's boxes just full of just the most random crap. It's just amazing. Look at that, that's cool. Model kit? Yeah, it's a model kit. Yeah. Still in the bag, still looks perfect. That is. So the guy who's got the Intellivision games, he's not here yet, so I'm just kind of looking around, see what other kind of stuff is here. And right there on the table, I see an old school monitor. I have no idea what this goes to, but I know it's old. You're How the you one doing? With the, uh, games. I, I, I am wondering. Trailer. And uh, I haven't found it yet. You haven't uh, found it yet? No. Okay, maybe this isn't gonna work out after all. You need a computer? I was thinking about that. Um, yeah. what, what do you well, ask? I've got the rest of it. Well, there's a, there's a computer that goes along with this. There's some paper deals. Okay. It's paper. scattered. It's scattered. Uh, oh, look at this. I'm just trying to get this. Uh, Apple. Right here, right here in front of us. Now. And underneath the table, which I hadn't got to yet, is an Apple II, like an old school original Apple II. <laughs> Cover here is missing. It's yeah. got the little deals pulled out. Now, I don't have any real history with the Apple II other than elementary school. There was a little classroom where they had several different computers. You'd go and you'd play text stuff. I remember playing the Apple II because I remember that logo, that multicolored Apple logo on the side of the computer. A majority of it was just like reading and writing exercises. Like, that's where I learned how I was a latchkey kid. Um, What's up? A latchkey kid? Is there are, are kids who are badass, first of all? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of aggravating because everybody, oh yeah, we used to play Oregon Trail. I didn't play no Oregon Trail as a kid in school. What kind of bull crap is that? Go through the door, go up the ceiling, you know, go through your mom's butthole. You know, all that stuff where you just basically had to type in random stuff and just see what happened. You know what? In my day, you had to read. You had to be like, oh, okay. Oh, what's this about? You know, and now nowadays it's all fucking shit. It's all fucking taco songs. It's all fucking huggy wuggy. It's all man, fuck you ass little motherfuckers. All right, because you guys are a bunch of fucking punk bitches. I don't know. Everybody has these fond memories of playing Apple II in school. That didn't happen with me. I was too busy sitting there doing my work on paper and pen pencil the way everybody else should have been, but apparently everybody else is playing games on an Apple II in school. A, B, A, 
B, C, D, yeah. And... It's just this stuff that makes me nervous. Especially like... I mean... Yeah, exactly. You, you know, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Because this says video out, this is cassette in or out. This has no label on it, this is what this is for. Right here. It's probably for the monitor. Or maybe, I don't know. Oh no, video out, I don't know. Well, no, that's, that means this, this is for this right here. So video out, which is rusty. I think this, is, this was in an area where it was probably like a, a lot of moisture. It looks like everything's here, and actually these things are collectible they, there's the big collector's market for apple twos not necessarily me however like i don't know if this is something i want to pass on if the price is right it's relatively clean on the inside yeah, it's not bad. i opened this thing up and actually funny enough this thing looks like it's been just stored in the worst area but i open this thing up and the circuit boards and everything is just completely clean like it looks gorgeous like like it's never been like dirtied up or anything yeah so this cable right here that the one that's cut <laughs> this one well, how you doing goes i i told mama right there mama. the only real issue that i'm seeing here is that somebody cut the cable and i think this goes to maybe like the printer or something like that uh, but anybody who really knows what they're doing would be able to fix that um Dang. not not me okay not me however somebody <laughs> zombie apocalypse y'all would never survive <laughs> y'all be like oh where's lucky Wuggy? yeah eating your god throat i can't emphasize enough how how many how many mouse oh. turds are in this thing uh, uh that hey, is cosmetically okay that i'm sure that'll come off I'm just okay. gonna get the right yeah. stuff to get it off. Like Monitor, and then we got the controllers here. Yeah. Coming across anything computer, like especially vintage retro computer stuff, uh, games included, is actually not easy to come by. Hey, I'll let you go 50 bucks. 50 bucks? So he's wanted $50 for this Apple II. I honestly don't know if that's good or not in this condition. The thing is, it's like with this stuff, if I if I could hook it up and know it worked. Yeah, oh, I mean, you know, if I knew it worked, it'd be a lot more. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. It, that, but that's the thing, it's like, what's the risk you want to take? I don't know if 50 bucks is the risk I want to take. Yeah, oh, I got you. Somebody, somebody else might, maybe, for yeah. sure. But uh, I don't think I'm, I'm In there. this condition, what it needs to be fixed, it, does it work, all that stuff. I honestly don't know enough about Apple II's to know that if this at $50 is worth it or not, but I'm thinking about it. In the meantime, he is searching up and down for these Intellivision games. I'm serious, they could be. Because I thought, you should forget So they could be, lit. no, I'm good. So they could yeah, be look for a green top, plastic yeah. cover. So he's looking around, just uncovering boxes and looking through all this stuff. He cannot find these Intellivision games to save his life. That range got me messed up. I don't see him in there. It might be at the house. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I'll paint them out to look. Cause I didn't bring all my, cause it's rain. Yeah. I, I like, I got some nice uh, studio stuff like that with my own uh, shadow boxes. Okay. And uh, they, they might be in there. Okay. It's not gonna go through. Like, you, this is another like bust. Did you find them? Yeah. He found them, look at that. Games, 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 games. I love Intellivision. Intellivision is great because it's one of my very first video game memories. I always loved Intellivision. Uh, there's just something about the primitive, terrible graphics and sound that bring back nostalgia and memories for me. My grandfather, my my uncle, and my you know rest of my family, especially with my grandma. Me and me and my grandmother used to play Intellivision all the time, especially Burger Time. Games and uh, instructions and stuff. And yeah. Most of Two things. One, they're literally the most common boxed in television games you will come across. I have most of these. I have all of them actually, but they're just so damaged, yeah. I'm really not interested, especially since they're all clearly damaged by uh, humidity. Uh, the boxes are kind of wilted away, they're stained. I just got, got a, lot of a lot of moisture damage. And... For this whole lot, I think $10 max, but honestly, I don't even want to spend $10 on it because I don't even need them. In school, I had to read a paragraph and you do a little 
assign like on the Apple too. So one of them was literally about being latchkey kids. He was saying that he probably wanted fifty dollars for obvious. That's obviously not going to happen. I might actually do five dollars if it included the tackle box, and that's not me being cheap. It's just being realistic. These things would literally just sit in my garage and collect dust. I'm interested in this. It's not a. It's not something I absolutely have to have. I come across a PSP game called Star Wars Battlefront. Star Wars Battlefront is a great series. Uh, it's been on many different platforms. That's a really good game. What are you, what are you asking on this? Uh, that one right there, uh, is it worth 10? Not to me, it's not, no. Uh, what'd you work, five? And he says, just do, give me five. But I'm like, I still don't know if I want to do five. I'm going to sit on this, I'm going to think about it. However, I think I'm going to try to work a deal on this uh, Apple II. It's so uncommon to find. Maybe, maybe it's worth it. Maybe, maybe I should. Especially since it comes with the controllers, monitor, disk drives. I'm actually starting to reconsider a little bit. Initially, I was like, no. I'm interested in this. I don't know if I would want to keep it, but I'm interested in this because I feel like in a way, I'm kind of like rescuing a part of history. I you know as cheesy as that sounds, but the Apple II was like huge back in the day. Would you do 40? Controllers, monitor, well, the controllers come with the computer. Yeah, but I'm it's saying like part, everything is part of the I'm saying this with the 40 for everything. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get ready. Because I got the rain coming in. Thank you so much. I got the rain coming. Appreciate you. So I got a PSP game and this Apple II for $40. Eventually, you realize, hey, either I take care of me or I fucking die. The end. It's not every day you come across an Apple II and all the accessories and are able to get it for $40. Was it worth it? I don't know, I guess we'll see. You can come out to these, these, these and find silent service on the NES all day long, but how often do you come across a, an Apple II, like a real true relic from the past, just kind of sitting here rotting away? Yeah, no, I'm happy I came out and I'm happy I found something pretty unique. Eh, just these little TLC, little TLC, a little fixing wires that's been ripped apart. Um, but who knows, maybe maybe we can get it looking and running like it did back so many decades ago. 79. 79. No, I don't like when Billy finds stuff when I'm not around. Who, who does like that? No one likes that. So basically what you're saying is the Apple II made you realize that our parents were horrible. Not necessarily horrible, but man, shit fucked up. <laughs> I mean, for real, it is. It's up. I like this green screen. How much was it? What the fuck? You want to do something? What will you do? What are you about to do? Walk past you. And that's it. Walk past you. Okay. Keep. Like keep, I said, you want to do something? Keep walking. What the fuck as long you? as you're just walking by, I got no problem. You stopped me. I stopped you. Yeah. Whenever somebody's walking from behind me, it's usually shenanigans. That's why. But you're not wrong. <laughs> so I was warranted in, in, in getting defensive. I don't know if warranted is the right word. Sit down. You could have you could have just turned casually to look and be like, okay, I see you. But you turned like you wanted to get cut physical. to cut to literally every time you walk from behind him, he goes like this. 